thank you for you know taking time out of your morning to, to chat all things off season yeah, um, I guess sort of my my first question uh, would be you know off season is it was inspired by uh, southern southern gothic novels mm -hmm. um did that sort of literary source of inspiration did that sort of dictate to you the or inform to say inform the decision to break this story up into chapters uh yeah for sure um definitely because i wanted this movie to have that kind of um kind of surreal dreaminess uh that you kind of get in you, that that almost seems to me more like reading some sort of book with its own rules and 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 less so um kind of conventional horror films in that sense so it, I love when movies are broken up into chapters but I feel like this really was uh a great way to to pay an homage to kind of like um like uh, older kind of creepy antique books that you'd find in some old store and you know, something like that <laughs> I mean how how do how do how do the chapters and their naming conventions then in inform the narrative um it really was this effort to i don't know it's it's funny because it just when we found while we were editing um it really wasn't difficult to uh, every single kind of flourish in the movie uh was was broken up in these individual segments so it was pretty easy to kind of uh go from there but then also you know i i, I really wanted to create this effort of like warning signs ahead you know yeah. <laughs> and so that's that's what each one is kind of um the suggestion of uh so th that was uh definitely they helped kind of like put the signposts of what's to come in a way <laughs> my review and i think quite a few other reviews have sort of compared the the visual look of the film to something like silent hill you know you've obviously mm -hmm. got the you know the this the foggy aesthetic but I think to me the, the whole film in a way feels like a, a cinematic video game I think the first time I watched it I did have to go and check that there wasn't some horror video game that I'd missed called off season um, <laughs> you know was that a you know an intentional an intentional thing when you were creating it to make it almost feel like like a game oh sure yeah and I I definitely you know I think that what's so interesting about um uh like with how great great something like youtube is is that when you don't you know because i love horror video games but i'm also like a real the 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 anxiety that they give me and the blood pressure like sometimes i think it's more fun to just kind of watch a, a no commentary playthrough of a video game and what uh you know as a filmmaker um you know i i do nothing but watch movies but i think that my effort too is to kind of create uh films that can be perceived as a little bit more interactive uh, in some sort of way and and so surely you know uh, uh, my generation uh really kind of has come up um with all these kind of cinematically inspired video games that and so it's really kind of funny to see how cinema inspired uh you know playstation 2 playstation 3 games that are now inspiring film again <laughs> um so so i think that's a direct follow to that but sure silent silent hill um the video game is much more of an influence uh than the movies uh i because just because i think that the movies had an impossible task of kind of recreating that terror um but you know also films like uh, dark water inspired the uh the visuals uh, uh christopher nolan's insomnia uh inspired and then obviously the fog uh was another big one <laughs> i think even outside of the look there's just a lot of it's the film's conventions and the way it works you know there's lots of of scenes of you know just just the one character you know looking through things you know looking through mm -hmm. pages seeing notes written down and that and so a lot of the film plays to you know to music and a lot of the the weight relies on the score and the cinematography to get the the story across you know how did you and your team sort of work to to craft that environment um uh well so i you know uh before we shot a frame of the movie i drew the entire thing out and then we edited it before any you know we even had a, a locations and so um i really really love i think the greatest thing about like david lynch movies and certain other um uh, uh, the movie pulse uh, i just love these kind of overwhelming kind of ambient soundscapes um and how the how the sound of, of a film can constantly be like getting in your head and like messing with your psyche so uh that that's something that i'm very passionate about and then in terms of visually i mean yeah we knew that we wanted 
uh, these kind of like sweeping moving takes, these kind of weaving camera work, especially when she like meets Jeremy Gardner's character. Um, it, because my effort uh, is to kind of make the audience feel like they're being dragged on the journey with you, uh, with these characters. And I love, yeah, Thelma Schoonmaker uh, says when she works with uh, Scorsese, their effort is to sometimes just kind of like slap the audience in the face. <laughs> and so uh, that's what we, you know, we're definitely trying to do in certain parts in this movie. <laughs> I mean, the sound definitely works. The the opening seagulls, um, when I was watching it, my cat was in the room and she threw herself into the window desperate to catch the birds that she thought were outside, <laughs> but totally were not outside. So. Well, we're sorry about the cat, but, uh, you know, at least someone was affected. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, much of the film is, sort of is, is shot outdoors. You know, Mother Nature isn't always the kindest. How was that? How was that to shoot? Uh, it was it was really difficult, but it's so funny because um, in Florida, they say that, uh, you know, you wait 15 minutes and the weather changes. But I'm of the superstitious belief that the minute that you write like over exterior overcast or exterior storm, like you're destined for like beautiful sunny days. But strangely, uh, when we shot, it was uh, completely overcast every single day and we got so lucky. Um, but, you know, the weird thing about the time of year that we shot down there was that one day it was absolutely freezing and everyone was like on the verge of collapse. And then the next day it was like 90 percent humidity and and we were being eaten alive by bugs. Our uh, camera team, they just what were covered, their arms were just covered by uh bug bites so it really wasn't the most pleasant my pitch was like oh we'll all go down to florida it's it's january it'll be beautiful down there it's a great little getaway uh and it was not that it was very very difficult <laughs> and as a as an independent filmmaker i think a lot of your films have got in front of audiences first um in the in the festival uh, on the festival circuit how does you know screening at festivals like fright fest and south by southwest how has that helped you as a filmmaker Oh, I mean, well, it's it's just it's unparalleled. I feel like you get to, it, you know, unfortunately with um, with our premiere on this at South by we had to do it online because of COVID. But typically, I mean, it's really a way to to watch how your movie affects the audience to kind of get in real time reactions uh, to sit and kind of like squirm and and you know pray like oh you know I, I i messed this up next next time i'll do this um but uh but yeah i mean i think it's and it's such a great especially fright fest like it's such an amazing community of people and so um there's nothing in the world better than seeing your movie with passionate horror fans i think that is just like it's the greatest gift there could possibly be so i'm very thankful uh to paul and alan for you know continually supporting my work because i think this is like my uh my, my fifth movie that's played over there so um, so they're very 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 great yeah i think i remember seeing i think pod was the first one of your films that i saw at, uh, out of a fright fest yeah it was definitely been a, few, <laughs> cool. been a few over the years yeah but it was a i mean i'm a big x files fan and that was sort of like the the lost episode almost so oh thank you yeah 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 it's uh you know it's and it's funny because uh, people still seem to to be finding Pod, and and uh, and so that's really, really a thrill for me. It's really a kick. I was so I was so young when we did it. <laughs> now I'm old and battle worn. <laughs> but you know, off season is is coming to Shudder. You know, across the globe. I know that you've had a you've got sort of a, a long standing sort of relationship with Shudder. What is it like now? You know, having your latest film releasing with them. I think it's great. I mean, I think what Shudder is doing right now can't really be um, compared on any other streaming platform. I think it's it really is just like such a unique um, and and kind of amazing way to get a movie out there, especially because I you know, the great thing about Shudder is like if you subscribe to Shudder, you know that you're looking for, you know, horror movies or thrillers and things like that. So really, there's kind of, you know, with other streamers there's a little bit of guesswork, like what's this, what's this horror movie? Am I going to even like it? But uh, Shudder has such incredible taste and curates such amazing movies. Um, and yeah, and so, and I did, you know, I've had a long relationship with them. I did a show with them called The Core. Uh, that was super fun to make. And, um, and so, yeah, so I, I hope to continue working with them. I mean, because I think when, she, when like Netflix first started, a lot of horror sort of went to there. And now that Shudder's sort of come along, it started, obviously, that's where, the horror films are going do you think that that may be you know part of netflix's slow decline that they're not getting as much you know variety of content 
Um, yeah, uh, well, so I, I mean, I'm not, I can't claim to be a, a genius at speaking for how Netflix operates, but it definitely is, has something to be said where, you know, um, the, the programming of Shudder and the acquisition of Shudder seems so laser focused and, and, and really, um, specific and effective. And I think that that really works to its favor. It's, it is kind of like, um, it does feel like back in, in the nineties or something, when you'd go to a specific channel and know what you were in for or something like Turner classic movies, where, you know, um, that it's carefully curated. And I think that, uh, quality over quantity is really kind of a, an effective tactic and it's working for Shutter, and it's, it's great. Uh, and so hopefully one day they'll have as billions of dollars like Netflix and then they'll finance 16 of my movies. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I think IMDb lists Crooks as your next project. Is there anything that you can share about that? Uh, Crooks is, uh, it, no, <laughs> I don't think that one's going to happen in any sort of timely manner. Uh, it's somehow, I don't know who put it on IMDb. We had an announcement like three years ago for it, but um, it, most likely that will not be my next film. But whenever it does inev inevitably get made in some form, uh, it's definitely in a very exciting kind of departure. So what are you working on next? Um, so I have a couple surprise uh, things that, that I'm, you know, kind of waiting to announce. And then I'm also going, I'm deep, very deep into my next script, uh, which is another horror movie, but um, it's very, very different again. And so uh, with any luck, you know, it's, it's funny because COVID kind of, you know, really shook up the entire way we make movies, right? And so now um, it really is, uh, hopefully the next movie that I make, will be bigger um, and and be a little bit easier to get going without having to worry uh, constantly about uh, uh, the world shutting down and things like that. So um, so that's the effort to make something much bigger and safe. <laughs> and you know, finally, you know, do you want to throw your hat in the ring for any potential future Silent Hill films? Oh God, uh, no, because I just feel like the separation between cinema and, and video games, it's just, there's no way to capture the terror that like either Silent Hill 2 or PT, the demo, um, did. And so I just feel like I would be walking into a, a minefield of disappointment. <laughs> so so uh, this would, th these were my, my they were the loving flourishes from off season, the loving homages and references are kind of my, uh, my, my, my offering to, uh, to the zeitgeist of Silent Hill, but I, I couldn't possibly, I'd be too, too terrified to, to make that film. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get that. I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a big Silent Hill gamer myself. Oh yeah. Which yeah. which one's your favorite one? Well, for me, it's it's probably one just because I played it the most, and that was that was where I was, you know, into introduced to this, you know, extremely messed up world. Uh -huh. um, you know, Harry Mason. You know, he was just, you know, the radio what's with that radio it's just <laughs> it's just it's you know it's cheesy it's got a lot of Clyde Barker to it but you know two and two and three hold up um homecoming I, I haven't actually finished homecoming I'm most of the way through homecoming and then I did that thing where you step away and then uh -huh. you forget you're so far into the game but you've forgotten all the controls and you know if you go in you're just immediately gonna die um, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's much more like until dawn and and um, the Man of Meeting games, that's that's where I'm at at the moment. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm uh, good friends with Graham Restick. So um, <clears throat> he's a he's a genius. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's those games are awesome. You know, I absolutely I love them. And I hope that there's I've heard rumors that there's going to be a Silent Hill 2 remake. And so I would love to see what that's like, because I just replayed Silent Hill 2 again and it terrified me so <laughs> uh, one day maybe maybe I'll uh, throw my hat in the ring to make a video game I don't know there we go there we go uh, well I wish you um best of luck with the with the release in Shudder and I'll hopefully see you at a Fright Fest in the future yes please hopefully thank you talk to you soon <laughs>